Well, when I say quantum, I imagine some viewers think of James Bond and Daniel Craig, or perhaps it sounds more like a 70s nightclub or a hipster telco. But what it really means is that the future of quantum physics has now arrived. This morning, it was announced that the team led by Professor Michelle Simmons at Sydney's University of New South Wales has made a quantum leap in quantum computing and announced the world's first integrated circuit manufactured at the atomic scale. This technology is expected to totally transform the way in which we store data, process information and develop technologies. And I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Simmons, who you may remember we interviewed on Outsiders, Ross and I, back in 2018. She's a former Australian of the Year and the brilliant mind behind this breakthrough. Professor Simmons, great to see you. How are you? Uh, terrific, Ryan. Had an absolutely wonderful day. Well, tell us all about it, because a lot of us, you know, you did explain to Ross and I several years ago. Ross probably understood it better than I did, but you did explain how it all works. Tell us what you've achieved. Then you were looking forward to this achievement. Tell us what you've achieved. Yeah, look, it's, it's very simple. We've built the world's first integrated circuit at the atomic scale. So what, what does that mean? Um, if you look at classical computing, you can map out the invention of the first transistor in 1947. It took about 11 years to get an integrated circuit where they put lots of components on a chip. Um, still didn't really know what to do with that chip. It took them another six years before they made commercial devices. And those devices were calculators and hearing aids, very small devices, before we finally got computers that we all use. Now we're going to the quantum regime. We're making devices that are very small that allows us to do calculations in parallel, so solving problems real time that otherwise would take thousands of years. But to get there, we've got to go through the same journey. So we made our first single atom transistor um, in 2012. In 2021, so actually two years ahead of time, we made our first integrated circuit at the atomic scale. And so that was predicted to be, you know, eight years later, as in the classical industry, but we, oh, sorry, 11 years later, as in the classical industry, but we got it in nine. And so now we know within the next five to six years, we'll have commercial devices. We will start to solve problems using those quantum states. And you were working with just two atoms. So explain how you work with just two atoms. So yeah, the, the whole um, device itself, the actual processor is made with two types of atoms. It's made with silicon atoms and phosphorus atoms. So there's no, more than two. Uh, there's lots of atoms in the actual processor, but just those two different types of atoms. So it's quite a unique approach that we've pioneered here in Australia over the last 20 years. And uh, just to prove, Michelle, that I've got a little bit of the geek in me, how do you mimic a molecule called polyacetate? I blew it, I blew it, I'd rehearsed that as well. A molecule <laughs> called polyacetylene. And why would you do that? Why would you mimic it? Pol yeah. So polyacetylene is how you say it, but that's fine. That's good, yeah, thank the, you. I guess I the key correct. thing is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you go back you know, to the 1950s, Richard Feynman, a famous physicist, said, you know, you, you won't be able to understand the way the world works, how nature works, you know, the whole world around us, unless you can build it at the same length scale. And so that means that what we've tried to do now, we can put atoms in place that literally will mimic the single and double carbon bonds of a, an organic molecule, polyacetylene. That's what we set out to do. The reason why, why would we do that? And that's really because, you know, even though classical computers are incredibly powerful, they find it very hard to calculate all the interactions between the electrons and atoms when you get above 20 atoms. So already at 20, it's like hard for classical computers. But if you could actually mimic it and make it inside a quantum system, then you can actually simulate exactly how it works. And that allows us to go all the way, way beyond what classical computers can do. So, Michelle, tell us the, you know, the, the applications. How will the rest of the world, they'll look at you and they'll go, Professor Simmons has done this in, in Sydney. Uh, so what's, what happens next and how, what's the commercial applications or the scientific applications? And what are the products, I guess, ultimately, or services we could be looking at that are directly related to these developments? Yeah, look, that's, it's a great question. So it's really the great thing about making a device, a processor like this, is it allows us to really understand how it works. And we already know now some of the things that we can do with it. So one, an example that we know is in the near term is we know that um, getting fertilizer comes from nitrogen. Nitrogen is a triple bonded molecule. We want to break that bond to let nitrogen go into, into the soil so that we can you know, increase food production. But that, 
that process of breaking that nitrogen triple bond, it's, it takes a lot of pressure, a lot of temperature. So it's a high energy process that costs a lot. Um, so if we can find a different molecule, use our processor, our simulator, to simulate a different catalyst, we'd be able to break that bond and that would in increase food production. So that's, that's just one example, but there are Fantastic. many. So understanding how drugs are designed is another example. It takes about you know, 10 years, billions of dollars to get a drug through trials. And it's because our classical computers can't figure out how all the interactions occur with the drug, with the human body. But if we can simulate those drugs, we'll be able to get much closer in time and get those products out to people. Uh, Professor Simmons, fantastic work. You must be extremely excited. I hope you're going to celebrate this evening. Uh, great work. And uh, what's next? <laughs> so literally for us, we're, we're gunning to build, you know, a quantum computer. So a full scale quantum computer. 100 qubits by 2028 is our next milestone. We set milestones every five to seven years. We put them out there publicly. And I think what's fantastic is that we're delivering. We put them out there and we deliver. And then honestly, it's such a buzz for the team to see that and know that we're on a journey to build a quantum computer here in Australia. Fantastic. Always great to have great Aussie success stories. Professor Michelle Simmons, thanks so much for coming on The Bolt Report this evening. And great congratulations. Thank you, Ryan.